a in vino verita, which in Latin basically means, in wine, truth. But it doesn't sound as fancy as in vino verita. Why do we do this? Because wine has been considered this fancy, hoity-toity thing. Let's check out the legs on this baby, shall we? Oh yeah, very nice legs. Uh, that's 14.2 alcohol percentage because I know. Uh, how about the bouquet? Mmm, brambleberry, strawberries. How about the palate? Most important part. Mmm. Don't forget the swirl. Crap! This either tastes good or it doesn't. You like it or you don't. Wine is not fancy. Welcome back guys, now I can think of no better wine or winery to start off my show with than La Crema. La Crema was founded in 1979 under the name La Crema Viniera, which in Spanish stands for the best of the vine. And that is still true to this day because La Crema is the standard in California for Chardonnay and Pinot Noir. In 1993, La Crema was purchased by some guy named Jess Jackson. You might have heard that name because he founded a little wine company called Kendall Jackson. Now, La Crema is still with the Jackson family to this day. What makes La Crema and Pinot Noir and Chardonnay from California so interesting is the fact that they are being grown, really guys, a Swiffer, this is the budget that we have. They are being grown in a little area called Sonoma. We have Sonoma and Napa, which is um, split up by the Mayacoma mountain range right here. You have San Francisco to the south with the Golden Gate Bridge uh, connecting the, the two. Uh, then you have the San Pablo Bay, which is basically the little inlet uh, to the east of San Fran. You have the Pacific Ocean over here, and then Northern Coast AVA. Now, AVA stands for American Viticultural Area, and that's basically how the government labels where um, grapes can be grown. Now, I'm not going to jump into that right now because it's very specific, but all among Sonoma and Napa, there are very specific different AVAs. So for an example of that would be right here is an AVA called Russian River Valley. Uh, here would be Mount Veter, and it goes so on and so forth. Every couple miles, it gets very, very specific, but we don't have to get into that right now. What I want to show you is what the fog does and how it plays a part. So you have the Pacific Ocean, very cold. You have cold winds coming in through here, coming through this little channel into the San Pablo Bay and reaching as far up into Napa here through this channel and then up into Sonoma too. Like I mentioned before, you have Cabernet and Merlot that do very well up in Napa because they like the heat. So in the morning the fog comes up and then gets pushed down as the sun rises, but it only gets pushed down to right around there. This is the Russian River Valley. This is where Pinot Noir and Chardonnay are king. That is where you grow your Pinot Noir and Chardonnay. And all up through this coast here as well. This is where all the cold air is mingling with the warm air creating that fog. Like I mentioned before, fog is the blanket that lets Pinot Noir do its thing in California. So in the morning, if you've ever been to San Francisco, you see that the Golden Gate just gets smothered in fog. It's beautiful. But that is really, it's, it's really doing the job of creating that blanket for Pinot Noir and Chardonnay. So I just wanted to blow that up and show you that this is the prime location for the best Chardonnay Pinot Noir. Another thing is that fog, this happens every single day. Every single day fog comes in and then gets burned off and recedes down. Every single day, up and down, just like our lungs. They go in and they come back out, in and out. That is how Napa and Sonoma breathe. All right, so I opened her up without a hitch. Thank God. Um, now this is where wine gets really technical. There's a bunch of things you gotta look for and you smell, and, but we're not gonna jump into that right now. We're just getting to know each other. This is the first show. So I'm just gonna go over three basic things that when a waiter brings you a bottle of wine, you should look for and you should expect um, so that you kinda know what you're looking for. So the first thing is the wine is open. Uh, you're gonna take a look at the cork. Make sure that it hasn't failed. 
uh, and make sure that the name on the cork matches the name on bo the bottle. Sometimes you get fake bottles of wine where the cork is not going to match and that's how you know if you have a fraudulent bottle. But that only happens with super, super expensive wines that you know people try and uh, bootleg. So we're not going to get into that either. But first things first, you've got your wine, you're going to want to swirl it and you're going to want to look at the color. And you want to also make sure that there's no sediment or dirt or any little pieces of cork in there. That'll be a key indicator that if the wine, if the cork did fail, uh, that'll be the first uh, indicator. Then you're going to want to smell it. Make sure that it smells, you know, fruity, uh, kind of like what Pinot Noir should smell like. You should get some fruits in there. Um, but basically, when you take your first whiff, what you're really looking for is to make sure that that wine, in fact, did not fail. Um, remember that this has been sealed for about a year and a half, two years sometimes, sometimes even more. Um, there can be bacteria in here that over time will start eating away at the cork and then air will seep in and then you'll get this right off the bat when you smell it you'll get this wet newspaper kind of like mossy smell that will just be repugnant and you won't want to drink it that's when um, a wine has failed and you're, you're going to want to send it back um, after that you smell it and you're, you're smelling for fruits uh, pinot noir uh, some of the key fruits specifically from california pinot noir is strawberry and kind of like the stewed cherry uh, characteristic that they pick up. Um, and then last but not least, you're going to want to taste it to make sure that what you're smelling kind of tastes like what's, you know, what's, what's going on. <laughs> now, when, again, there's a bunch of other technicalities you can do through each of these steps. Once you taste it, I can talk for hours about how I'm picking up that stewed cherry, some brambleberry, there's a little bit of cola and some chocolate in there, but again, we'll get to that. But, uh, this is varietally correct, this is from California, so you're gonna get nice fruit, really good acidity, and when I mean acidity, I'm not talking about battery acid, I'm talking about like that nice bite that happens, uh, that kind of puckers you up on the side of your, of your cheeks and all, all through your tongue. Um, so that's what happens with Pinot Noir, this is very food friendly wine. You can pair this with uh, lamb or beef, even some poultry. Uh, Pinot Noir is like the very convertible, uh, malleable wine to pair with certain foods. Um, but we'll get there. We'll get there. This is actually a really nice Pinot. 2014 is tasting pretty good. Thank you for watching my first show. We'll get more in depth. Um, the whole point of this is to go through the intricacies and little delicacies and beauties of wine. So until the next show, I hope you enjoyed this first one. I'm a little bit of a clown, so we'll see how it goes. But that doesn't sound, that doesn't sound as fancy. That Take from the beginning. Woo! More kids my age to get into this beautiful science. That's my dog, Buddy. He just made a cameo. Wine has become this hoity-toity fancy thing. Come on, man. This either tastes good or it doesn't. Oh, I didn't do the whole... Ah! Let's do it with that. But we do that. Why? Because somewhere along the line, you just ruined my shot! <laughs> All right, so that was my first show. Thank you guys for watching. The purpose of this shot is just so that I can show you that we can do a walk and talk scene. Any TV show worth its salt has the infamous walk and talk scene. We can do that. So this show is going to be very interactive. I'm on Snapchat, I'm on Twitter, I'm on Instagram, I'm on Facebook. While we're filming, we've done a couple snaps, we did a couple little Instagram videos. Look for those. I'm going to put them all right here, here, and here. That's what they do on YouTube, that whole little thing. So thank you for watching. Let's uh, drink some wine and have fun.